Ephesians chapter 6. Follow along with me as I read. I'm going to start reading in verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can distinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Paul's final thoughts to the Ephesian believers as he's preparing them for this spiritual battle. Of course, because there's something that that is awaiting them. Because many believers, as we know, find out the hard way after they accept God's free gift of salvation. That's when they really find out how hard life really gets. And, and if we, as we have done here, studying through this whole book, many, he's writing to these people, many of them, uh, who have come to faith in Christ. The first three chapters, he gives them doctrine. The last three chapters, he especially gives them on how to live it out. And then he says, okay, you got to get ready because the battle is going to begin. Now that you really come to faith in Jesus Christ, you have, you have accepted that free gift, now life is really, really going to get tough. Because once the Lord really starts to work in your life, life starts to really get hard. Is that, does that sound that's ever happened in anybody's life here? At least it's, at least it's happened in, in my life. I don't know. My, my life got harder when I became a believer. It, it did. And it just, I don't know, it just seems to get harder sometimes. You know, as God brings me through the fire, per se, and, and, and just keeps working and, uh, on me. And, and uh, we get a sense that sometimes that it's a spiritual tug of war between what we were and what, and what we are now. What we used to do and what we should be doing. And Paul, Paul, better than anyone else, is especially, especially aware of this better than any, than most people because of the spiritual battles that he went through. So he knew it firsthand. And these spiritual battles for each and every one of us never end. They just keep going because of the spiritual bodies that, that we live in. And God gives us these ar- that God gives us this armor for these specific spiritual battles. So I chose this specifically for this weekend, Memorial Day weekend, because we're to recognize all the battles that the, our nation and many nations have fought through the world history, the battles that have gone on. But the but the battle, the battles or battle that Paul is talking about here 
specifically, the spiritual battles he's talking about is the battle for your heart. Because that's, that's the battle that's constantly going on in each and every one of us on a daily basis. And this is not just ordinary armor. Every piece, every piece he talks about here is important. Every piece is critical. Why? Because if one piece is missing, if just one piece is missing, or if one piece is neglected, the spiritual forces that are coming, that are coming for you and against you know how to tempt you and know how to get to you. Some years ago, I was uh, working back home and um, there was a police officer who was shot. A person walked up to the police car and he was sitting in the driver's seat and somebody walked up to him as he was sitting in the driver's seat. They walked up to him as if they were coming, walking up to talk to him and fired a shot at him and hit him from the side in the one spot, the one spot on his side where the bulletproof vest didn't cover. Killed him instantly. So I want you to get the picture here that every piece, every piece of armor that Paul talks about here is critical because if because if some if just one piece is left out, we leave ourselves wide open. Because the enemy knows how to get in, specifically to what your weak spot is. And this is serious warfare. You ever felt like you've been in spiritual warfare all day long, or all week long, or all month long? Or all year long? You ever walk down the street just mad at, just mad at what's happening? But here's the thing. You, 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 you have a responsibility to put it on. You do. Every, every believer has the responsibility to put it on. Each and every day. It's not just a one-time thing. It's not just a one-time thing. Oh, you know what? It's uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a believer. I came to faith in Christ. I, I accepted God's free gift of salvation, so that's it. I don't need to do it. No, no. Uh-uh. No. This is not just a one-time thing. You need to do this constantly. Constantly not to let your, not to let your guard down. So here we go. All right? Six ways to win the spiritual battle for your heart according to our text. The first way is stay committed to the truth. Stay committed to the truth. Notice at the head of Paul's list here, he said, Stand therefore, verse 14, Stand therefore having fastened, which means being girded, equipped, having fastened the belt of truth. So, so important is the truth that, here, listen to this. So important is God's truth that Jesus prayed in John seventeen seventeen that his disciples would be sanctified, set apart with the truth. And the picture here is, as you know, as a soldier having the freedom to stand with a sense of urgency, stand there for having fastened yourself with the truth. Not stumbling over someone else's doctrine, not stumbling over someone else's teaching. What I was telling you was very, very sincere when I was pray- just before I prayed for, for this country. We've lost our way with the truth. We have. And, and, and we're so and now and now it's like Christians are so afraid to say the truth. You know? 
they're so scared to say the truth because of the onslaught by the media. And then they try and skirt the truth. Because of so many people, it's going to upset. I'm not saying that you have to be mean. You, know, you have to be mean spirited, but preach the truth. You know, but we, but you know, we're we're so concerned about hurting people's feelings. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but the truth is the truth. He says, therefore. Stand fast in the truth. It's like strapping it on, strap yourself, and that's why he leads off with the truth. If you don't stand on, if you don't strap on on the truth, you have nothing. You got nothing. You know what you're standing on? Nothing. You got nothing. You know what our country stands for now? Nothing. You got this, you got that, you got this, you got that. That, you know what that means? Nothing. They say that our country, you know, you got all of the people saying, well, you know what, that, that it was never meant to be that, that, that our country was never meant to stand on Judeo-Christian principles. Then tell me, why is Scripture written all over Washington in all the different places? Why? Why? A country that doesn't stand on God's truth will not stand on anything. And eventually it will fall. Mark my words. America is on the greased slide going to hell. It is. But I ain't given up hope. He says, stand on, stand on the truth. When the Civil War broke out, there was a young man by the name of Joshua Chamberlain. With his high standards of right and wrong, he, he enlisted to help the Union Army and achieved such a standard of notoriety during the Battle of Gettysburg, he became known as the Lion of the Round Top, going on to participate in 20 Believe this, 20 Civil War battles, wounded six times, receiving four accommodations for bravery. In April 1865, he was informed that General Robert E. Lee's his intention to surrender. And Major General Joshua Chamberlain of the Union Army was chosen with the honor of of presiding over conducting the events that brought the war to a close. Because here was a man who committed to the truth that it was wrong to treat people wrong. The best piece of armor you can put on is the truth of God. Please never, ever forget that. Stay committed to the truth through the spiritual battles. Number two is stay committed to live righteously. Stay committed to live righteously. He says, Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. It's not only important to know the truth, but ladies and gentlemen, it is important to live it out. Many times we can come up with our own set of rules. But the piece of armor that that Paul speaks here guards the most important part of you. You know what is the most important part of you? Your heart. That's the most important part of you. Every believer is in a daily battle, moment by moment, to live righteously. This is a good spot for an amen. (laughs) Thank you. Don't you sense it? Don't you, don't you go through that battle every day? Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I think this or should I think that? Huh? Does that, am I the only one that goes through that? I must be. Without this piece of armor, we are always tempted to do the opposite of what God wants us to do. That's the battle. Day to day. Decision by 
decision to stay committed to live righteously. Man, ladies and gentlemen, stay committed to the truth. Fasten it on in those daily spiritual battles and stay committed to live righteously. This is the spiritual battle we all go through. It's, it's not just one thing to know it. It's, it's, it is entirely another thing to know it and live it out. Please. Number three, stay committed. I put that twice on there. You can tell I did this early at 6 o'clock this morning. Stay committed to stand tall. Stay committed to stand tall. Well, what do I mean by that? He says here, And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, Willibald C. Bianchi was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor posthumously when the rifle platoon of another company was ordered to wipe out two strong enemy machine gun nests. First Lieutenant Bianchi voluntarily and of his own initiative advanced with the platoon leading part of the men. He was wounded early in the action. He didn't stop for first aid, but discarded his rifle, began firing his pistol, located the machine gun nest, and personally silenced the machine gun nest with grenades. Wounded again, this time through the chest, he climbed up on top of an American tank, manned the anti-aircraft machine gun, and held the enemy off until he was completely knocked off the tank by a third severe wound and killed. This was on the Philippine island of Bataan. We know it as Bataan. The actual pronunciation is Bataan. The reference here, here, there's, you in a spiritual battle right now? Let me tell you something. There is peace in the midst of the battle. There is peace in the midst of the battle. And that's the good news. Because a good pair of shoes, a good pair of shoes won't make you stumble. You can stand tall. You can stand tall in the truth. Because the truth is that Jesus Christ still is in the business of saving people. Because Jesus Christ is still in the business of changing hearts. Because Jesus Christ is still in the business of changing lives. Because Jesus Christ is still in the business of changing countries. Because Jesus Christ is still sitting on his throne in heaven and controlling all of the nations. Right? Ain't nothing happening in this world that he doesn't know about. Ain't nothing happening in this world that hasn't been preordained. Believe me, when something happens in the Middle East, he, he is not sitting there going, man, I had no idea that was going to happen. That blew me away. Uh-uh. God is still in control, ladies and gentlemen. And no matter what you're struggling with today, there is peace in the midst of the battle. Okay? And you can stand tall with that. You don't have to stumble. And you don't have to crumble. You can stay committed to stand tall. Amen. She knew it. See? 
stay out of the mouth of babes. You can do it. As I was putting this all, as I was putting this all together for for this weekend, God just prompted my heart to to start researching these stories about these servicemen who sacrificed by being committed. They were committing their lives and just sacrificing their lives for everything and standing firm in everything. And that's why I've already read you two, and I've got one more. And, and it says, lady, you know what? In order, in order to – these spiritual battles are real for us every day. You need to stay committed. Number four, stay committed to an active confidence in God. Stay committed to an active confidence in God. He said, stand, there, stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel. Of peace. Verse 16, in all circum- notice, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Paul says all. In other words, you'll need it. Don't leave home without it. In all circumstances, when the enemy would shoot flaming arrows, soldiers would soak their shields back in these times in the water, So when the flaming arrows would hit it, it would extinguish the flaming arrows. Because, let me tell you this, the number one target of Satan is your faith. And faith is an active confidence in God. That's the number one target is your faith. And he will do anything to discourage you. If, the, if, the, if you've ever seen the movie Braveheart, you know what I'm talking about. Here was, here was, the, here was the, uh, the country of Scotland up against the country of England. England, this great, this great big country with this great big army. And Scotland fighting for their freedom. And they're on the battlefield and they don't have, they got, you know what they got? They got nothing. They don't have horses. They got very few horses. They've got uh, they, uh, makeshift weapons, and here comes here comes here comes the English army with all of these horses and magnificent, and they they've got archers and they've got everything, and they've got this massive army. And usually, usually, when The Scottish army came up against the English army, and they saw all this massive army. The Scots ran. And that's exactly what Satan wants you to do. Because he will do anything to discourage you when your problems look too big. He will discourage you. Ladies and gentlemen, stay committed to an active confidence in God. In all circumstances, not just one, not just two, not just several, not just every now and then. In all circumstances. He will do anything, and that's where the sharp sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, the most powerful weapon there is. Why would, tell me something, why would we want to fight with anything else? The Word of God. Faith is an active confidence in God. Stay committed to protecting your thoughts. Stay committed to protecting your thoughts. The last piece of armor there is put into place. You know why? The helmet of salvation. You want to know why? Because the helmet is the, believe me, as a hockey player, let me tell you, it is the most uncomfortable piece of equipment there is. Believe me. I wish I didn't have to wear one. I but I risk great injury if I didn't have it on. It's easy to be killed in battle if your head is not 
protected. The enemy will often place great discouragement and great doubt in our minds to defeat us. And that's when that sword of the Spirit comes, that, that, that's when we use God's Word, that sword, to just pierce that doubt, pierce that discouragement. The battles are real. The battles are daily. The battles are constant. Just like it seems that with our country, you know, it seems like it seems like we get done with, with one skirmish and something else happens. We get done with one war and something else comes up. You know, doesn't it seem that way? You know, and I wasn't around then, but, but I can remember somebody saying, you know, we, we just got done with World War II, and then what happened? Korea. And we just get done with Korea, and then what happened? Vietnam. Broke it now. Yeah. Stay committed to the truth. Stay committed to live righteously. Stay committed to stand tall. Stay committed to an active confidence in God and stay committed to protecting your thoughts. The last one is stay committed to prayer. In late 1950, Army Lieutenant Colonel Don Faith Jr., an Indiana native and World War II veteran, was assigned to the 1st Battalion, 32 Infantry Regiment, which was attached to the 31st Regiment Combat Team. The units advanced along the east side of the Chosin Reservoir in North Korea. When on December 1st, Lieutenant Colonel Faith was seriously injured by shrapnel and died the following day, and his body was never recovered. He was awarded post Humously, the Medal of Honor, but the Army never gave up looking for his body. In an article printed in the USA Today, in April 15th of this year, this, this happened in 1950, Lieutenant Colonel Fate's remains were found and identified. And he was buried at Arlington National Cemetery. The Army never gave up looking for this man. They were committed to bring this man home. Ladies and gentlemen, stay committed to prayer in the battle. Because the battle is going to continue always. And it never ever ends. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your truth, Lord. Lord, each and every person here today is struggling with something whether it's physical, spiritual, emotional. We're all battling something, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would give us all your power through the truth of your word to fight the battles, Lord, that we would be committed to your truth. Lord, help us to stand firm on your truth. Above all, anything else, Lord, help us to stand firm on your truth. You said yourself, thy word is truth. And help us to, live, to, to not only, Lord, live by it, Lord, but to preach it and to teach it, Lord, please. And I pray for our country on this, specifically on this weekend that we would turn from our wicked ways and live by your truth. That we would acknowledge and repent and you would bring a great, a great, great 
awakening of your people, Lord, please. And may it start with me and every every believer here, Lord. But Lord, we do thank you for our country. We thank you for the many blessings. We thank you for the many soldiers who sacrificed to do right, to do good, to glorify you. And we thank you. And I pray these things in your name. Amen. And we thank you. And I pray these things in your name. Amen. And we thank you. And I